Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Dreams Unlimited Travel Podcast. My name is John Magi, and I will be your host. Uh, and this episode is all about Disney's Alani Resort and Spa in Hawaii. This is actually part two of a four-part series we'll be doing about Alani. Um, and this one particular episode, we're going to be focusing on dining at Alani. And I am joined by our Alani experts, client services manager for Dreams Unlimited Travel, Kevin Close. Hi, everybody. Agent consultant for Dreams Unlimited Travel, Tracy Heinrichs. Aloha. And producer, Craig Williams. Hello. Producer for everything, I should probably say. Yes. Not just the show, but everything. Um, as I said, this is part two of a four-part series on Alani. Uh, the last time we talked about things to do, activities at Alani. Now we're going to get into the real goody stuff. We're going to talk about eating. <laughs> um, we specifically focused this trip on trying to eat as Everywhere we could, not a lot. Sometimes we don't do things. Everything we could, I almost said. We tried to eat everything we could. We don't normally eat when we travel, so this time we thought we'd make a conscious right. effort to concentrate well, on eating. To save money somewhere. Uh, <laughs> for those of you who don't know, Kevin and I recently turned from a 12-night stay at Alani in May, and I know that Tracy was just there in February. That's right. For not as many nights. Not, not as many not nights, nights, no. Yeah. Tracy Sad. didn't go as many nights. Poor me. So we wanted to make sure that we got a chance <laughs> to experience as much of the dining as possible so we can do some reviews of it and let people know what's good and what's not And what's good. really funny is when I went this time, I tried to, we conscious, made a conscious effort to focus our dining on eating elsewhere. Not just eating elsewhere, but um, cooking more at the villa. And our goal was to, how can we do this? How can we make dining a little bit more affordable this right. trip? So, I think when we talk about the dining, we were going to do kind of our usual thing that we do, uh, value for what you got type of thing. But I think you'll find that I was surprised at how inexpensive some things were to do. Right. Um, there's some places that are very expensive. But for the most part, I was shocked at what we got for the amount that we paid. Um, I want to point out that this show is going to be fairly picture intensive because it's going to be pictures of food. Uh, we're going to do our best to describe what we're looking at for those of you who do not uh, watch us, who only listen to us. And there's going to be a couple of videos. And for those videos, we will try to talk over them and give you a description of what we're looking at so you don't feel left out if you are a listener rather than a viewer. Um, if you're not a viewer, if you are a viewer, if you're not a viewer, I also want to encourage people to go out and subscribe to our YouTube channel. That lets you get notifications as soon as the show goes up, so you can go and watch the shows when they are ready. Um, the other thing I want to mention before we get started is we are running a contest all this month. Uh, we are giving away a five-day, four-night stay at Disney's Alani Resort and Spa. And at the end of the show, we'll have information about how you can enter that contra contest, how you could possibly win, and also more of our questions uh, for that contest. So, dining at Alani, again, tried to do as much as we could, um, had a really great time, enjoyed everything we did. Uh, we also ate outside of Alani, and that's going to be a different episode, so don't worry about, you know, if you think you don't want to stay at Alani and eat. But uh, one of the things we did was did the Ama Ama breakfast. Ama Ama is sort of their signature restaurant uh, at the resort, and it's got a beautiful location. Uh, the restaurant is completely open in the back to the beach, so you can have a great view of the ocean, of people hanging out, splashing around. If you hit the right time at dinner, you might get a sunset view, although you don't actually face you know, in the exact right direction, the sun sets a little bit off to the side. Yeah, when we were there beautiful. for dinner, and we were there for dinner, and we'll talk about that. But there, the sun was setting, and it was kind of bright inside the restaurant. Along that whole open area, there are screens, motorized screens that they can pull down. You can still see through the screens, but they do block a bit of the blinding sun. So um, let's go through some of the pictures, and we'll talk about the food we had. Um, one of the things that we really... I can say really enjoyed. Some of us really enjoyed it. Some of us didn't. Is you get a press pot of coffee. Uh, we got a press pot of coffee with breakfast. If you're a coffee drinker and you like Hawaiian coffee, it is really great. I don't have a picture of that, I don't think. Do I? Later on. Um, but for some folks, they didn't enjoy that. So they just got a regular cup of coffee. But let's go to our first picture. 
This is something called the Ama Ama Breakfast Sandwich. Lobster claw, bacon, sunny side up egg, avocado, heirloom tomato, butter lettuce. This is hard to read, I apologize. Uh, truffle oil served on a brioche bun. Uh, there's a lobster claw under that egg. And I have to tell you, this was surprisingly delicious. It was good. Um, it was hard to eat. You had to cut it in half because it was so tall. But it was a wonderful, wonderful breakfast sandwich. And um, food at Olani is not inexpensive. This was $22, but this is Disney prices. Step outside of Olani and the prices go down significantly. Right. However, it was delicious. It was big. The lobster was fresh. It was, um, you had a side, uh, came on a side of uh, fruit, but you could get their Olani potatoes for whatever that's worth. On to the next item. Mm. This was their Eggs Benedict. Are you okay? Yeah, that doesn't seem to be on here. That's okay. Go ahead and talk about it. As you said, say, it should be on there for sure. Maybe I missed it. Um, sort of a traditional Eggs Benedict. It was delicious. Again, people found it to be, this was quite a bit more food than the sandwich. So people had this, yeah. felt like they got more of a deal for their uh for their dollar, sort of type of thing that's a little bit messy, but just great. Perfectly poached eggs, a great hollandaise sauce on top. This was their basic mixed breakfast. Um, toast, bacon, eggs, stuff like that. Right, so we had one person in our group decided he was going to go with sort of the regular breakfast to sort of compare it, because it's an easy comparison to <laughs> other stuff. Very good, enjoyed it, thought it was delicious, bacon nice and crispy. Um, you can see from the pictures, care in the presentation. These are not slopped on a plate. This isn't just thrown on a plate. It's actually quite good. Yeah, this wasn't. We've eaten breakfast here as well, and this is not diner breakfast food. I mean, this was elevated. This was more brunch. Yeah, even really at brunch quality. Even early on, it was a brunch thing. Yeah. This is their corned beef hash. It's different than I've ever had. This was large chunks of corned beef and potatoes. With, again, a poached egg on top with a hollandaise sauce. Mm -hmm. Delicious. Absolutely yep. delicious. The breakfast, we loved the breakfast. Yeah, we actually went back there for a second time. This is the the waffle. It's Belgian waffle with apple, banana compote, and Nutella cream and vanilla ice cream. We decided to get it without the vanilla ice cream. This we actually got for the table. Because we were share. dieting. <laughs> we were dieting. <laughs> Everybody got a breakfast. We decided to get a something to share. So we got this to share, and we also got the pancakes to share. I think the pancakes were a bigger hit than the waffle itself, but still delicious and good. And everybody had a chance to take a bite. I'm not a really big breakfast eater, so I know when we had a breakfast there, I had um, it was a bagel that came, you know, with some cream cheese and fresh fruit, and uh, it was just perfectly light. It was so it was really really good. So I don't know what's happening. There are two different bread selections. The bakery selections are called the gift of bread. Nothing pretentious <laughs> uh -huh. about that. Uh, there's classic flavors, which include a cinnamon roll, croissant, apple danish, and apple-filled multigrain muffin. All of them were terrific. And then there's the Hawaiian flavors basket, which is guava fan, coconut cream pocket, croissant, orange macadamia nut muffin. I don't know which is which. However, the Hawaiian flavors was far less popular than the classic flavors. And these were $9 each. And again, we overordered, as we usually do. However, we wanted... it was all about trying things and taking right. pictures and being able to talk about them. With everybody getting a regular meal and waffle and um, pancakes and two bread baskets, which is all way overkill, and coffees and juices and things like that, I, I was surprised it came surprisingly to under $30 a person. Mm -hmm. for, I think there were how many of us there that day? Seven? Mm -hmm. Seven of us that day. So at under $30 a person, well, you might say, well, that's a lot for breakfast. I can go out and I can eat for 10 bucks and get a grand slam at, slam at Denny's. However, I don't know are, if this picture is up, but no, we were not drinking at breakfast. No, that's for the different oh, okay. thing we're going to um, do. Also, you're eating paradise. You're eating in an open-air restaurant. You're overlooking the beach. It, it's absolutely the most lovely atmosphere and again we thought it was so good we went back a second time there was an option for us to we decided another meal there was going to be another breakfast would be at Amahama. so very very much we enjoyed it all right going on to Amahama dinner again 
Amma Amma is a beautiful spot. Probably nighttime is the, really a great time to go, because the better time to go because of the views you get and the lighting you get. Yeah, I'm not going to go through the menu. Let's talk about what we had because the menu itself changes every night. I was I had something that I thought was absolutely delicious. I need you to do me a favor though. I need you to stick to the slides because Craig can't jump. I'm not going to say anything about the actual slides. I just wanted to let you know that what I was saying okay. is I had something that I thought was absolutely delicious. But it was never available again the week we were, the 12 days we were there. So the menu changes regularly. Some of the stuff we're going to do is is uh, regular, though. I mean, this is a drink that one of our party got. Um, got a mudslide-ish type of drink. They thought it was great. Um, we are not drinkers, so we did not really, didn't impress us. I think more like a dessert to me. We got appetizers. Ta-da! This was their French onion soup. Delicious. Absolutely fantastic. We loved it. Um, actually, it was a Maui onion soup. Um, again, can't say anything bad about it. It was a great soup to have. They had a special soup that night. Um, what was this, Kevin? This was... Tomato soup. Roasted... Camuela tomato yeah, soup. With truffled brie cheese and Portuguese sweetbread sandwich. Mm. Mm, it was good. <laughs> it was really, good. really good. And again, this is one of the items that would change depending on when you had dinner there. Just so you know, all items change every night. No, it's not true. <laughs> this is the. <laughs> like, can we pause there, please? I would like to have this debate. <laughs> Did they all change? <laughs> I don't believe so. I don't think that. I mean, things like you had, you had the fish. That changed every night. The special soup changed, but they have the Maui onion soup every night. That's my so opinion. do you think it's a little bit like maybe like a cruise where you've got the staples? Yeah, you've got a few staples, then, but it's a know, very sustainable menu, right. so they try to make sure they bring in whatever's local, fresh stuff. whatever's fresh th- at that point. The last thing we looked at was a cheese platter for three different kinds of cheeses and grapes and stuff. This was very good. This, in my opinion, was possibly a little bit overpriced for. Um, for what you got, but it was still. Would you consider the appetizers there to be more individual appetizers as opposed to share appetizers? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, for sure. Moving on. This is the, I'm not even going to try to say it, the grilled pork chop. Um, I don't know what that middle word is even supposed to be, korobudu. Uh, <laughs> herb, coconut, crusted, heirloom, tomato, salad, jicama, um, in a peanut sauce. Um, I tried it. It was delicious. This was not my dish. I'm not a big fan of, you know, put peanut sauce on meat type of things. So it kind of weirded was, me out a little now, bit. Did it come, like when you look at it, it's just the meat there on a the plate. Did it come yeah. with a side and no, sides so sides are, sides are a family style, yeah. a la carte? Yeah. That made the meal more expensive for sure. Because yeah. as you get vegetables and stuff, a la carte, it definitely adds to the price. Oh, this is okay. This is the shrimp. So this is something that was extra. So like literally the shrimp. Correct, the (laughs) shrimp. Well, there's a story. You ordered your appetizer by the shrimp. Oh, I see. And one of the gentlemen with us decided that he didn't want a whole appetizer, but he wanted to know what was special about these shrimps, so they allowed him to order a shrimp. I apologize for... The going back and forth, but I wanted to get the price. Like the shrimp was like four dollars. Yeah, <laughs> for like one piece of shrimp. We ate at the boathouse uh, recently, and they did the same thing. The oysters were per oyster. The shrimp was per shrimp. So you know, expensive. Mm-hmm. Certainly not inexpensive. It was a nice shrimp. It was beautiful. It was big. However, four dollars for a shrimp is kind of, you know, a little bit crazy. Yeah, you can order them separately. Jumbo shrimp, $4 each. Goose Point oysters, $3 each. King crab legs, $18 each. So if you wanted to add this to, the, add yeah. this to your meal. That was about, what I think, very similar to what Boathouse was. What else we got going on there? Oh, my gosh. What is that? Some kind of food. Those are french fries. I don't remember what this was. All right, let's move on to the next thing. Because I don't remember that. That's the, the fruits. 
Those are mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes. Again, these are all the accompaniments. So I think they're eight dollars each. And is this a share? Like this looks like a small bowl, but this is a share bowl. No, this was an individual serving. I was gonna say wow. we tasted it. Everybody had a chance to taste everything, but I wouldn't think it was. Okay. I wouldn't consider it family style at all. All right. These are per that person. That was the salmon. That was yours, right? Or oh. was that that was Kathy's? Yeah, she got the salmon. That was very good. She enjoyed it. I liked that was a nice piece of fish, a nice sized piece of fish. Mm-hmm. That for what you got. Oh, oh, that's not it. That's out of dinner. Okay, so we are done with the dinner stuff. I thought we had another meal in there. I, we had, I were... had the sustainable fish yeah. catch. It was opa, a nice white fish, and it was absolutely positively, positively delicious. Um, I can't yeah. figure this out. Um, this was tough. We didn't actually get a menu from Amama either breakfast or dinner. I took pictures of it and tried to piece it together for us to have for reference. So it's hard to go back and forth and find the. Pricing. I asked the waiter. We I knew we were coming. We had uh, plans to have a second dinner at Amama, and I asked if this was something that was served on a specific day. And the waiter told me that no, this was the menu was based on what the chef could find that morning. Right. I'm not sure what John heard. That's what I heard. So. My meal was never available again during the 12 days that we were there. So it, it, you yeah. either might have the same menu or you might not. The food was very good. Everybody who, who had it loved it. However, it was very, very expensive. Mm-hmm. This, in my opinion, where I thought breakfast was worth the money, right. I did not feel that dinner was worth the money. Did, have you, did you do lunch there? We did not. We did lunch when we were there the last time because we like the food there. Uh, we've done breakfast before. We have done dinner, and we thought felt the same way. We thought this is my dinner budget for like three days. Yeah, it was that much. So we decided to try a lunch and really enjoyed it. And with lunch, whatever we were ordering was coming accompanied with the sides. So it just kind of felt like better value. It was not a cheap lunch. Don't get me wrong, but we felt like it was good value for the quality of the food we got, That's and it good. was nice to take that break from what your your activities of the day and to sit down and have a lunch and not have to. You know, beating the chicken fingers, which could get a little bit old after. We did days. not cancel our second reservation because it was too expensive or because the food was bad. We decided to do something else instead, so right. we never did go to the second dinner at Amama. We actually had thought about going to lunch, but lunch never fit into our plans. Right, it was just one of those things where we were either out mm-hmm. or we were at a timing where we didn't want yeah. to do lunch. But um, in my opinion, I thought that this was too expensive. Yeah for what the amount of food you got but it was delicious well prepared and certainly you know a location that can't be beat location, location and maybe location. you know if you're doing a week at alani or longer or shorter and it's a special occasion or Absolutely. i think maybe you maybe you want to do one dinner a week or during your vacation as a family like this then it's that it's a special this is not where you want it most people are not going to want to have dinner every night now we had two breakfasts there and we went out to breakfast, I think, twice. Mm-hmm. So out of the 12 days, we ate four breakfasts right. out of the room. The other times, we made breakfast. Mm-hmm. So it was... And it wasn't like it was a chore, oh, I have to make breakfast. It was like, it was fun. We had a great no, time. I get up yeah. and I enjoy cooking. So um, We that, made several dinners in the restaurant, in the restaurant, in the hotel also. So we did the same thing, you know. Yeah, we tried to sort of mix it up and try to get an experience of all the restaurants as well as... Um, eating in the room and eating outside of the resort. Uh, next up, we went to Makahiki, and that is their um, buffet restaurant. Mm-hmm. They do a breakfast there, and they do a dinner. Um, part of each place you go to is we're going to do the video first, Craig. I'm okay. sorry. We're going to do the Aloha video first. Part of what they do is there's a character breakfast. This is Auntie's character breakfast. And at night, there was a Many Huni Mischief character dinner, However, that ended in July. Right. Ended in June, the end of June. And I'm going to be honest with you. When we were planning this, I made the reservation for it, and then they called and told me it was canceled. The dinner. Then then they called and told me it was back again. Yeah, it was was new. When we were there in February, it wasn't an offering. It was just going to be coming, so I don't know that it really And I will say this one. What I understand from asking people, the food is the same. Mm-hmm. And whether you go for the characters or there's no characters going on, you're going to get the same food. And th- when the characters are there, is the price a little bit higher 
on the character breakfast mornings than the regular mornings? Or I do they not even do regular mornings anymore? I didn't, I, the time we were there, there was no regular mornings. Okay. I know that we had some folks who went to the dinner. Well, the way they structured the character dinner was you had to have a seating between a certain time. And then after that time, the character dinner was no longer happening. And some folks we were traveling with did that, went to the dinner, and it was the same price. But there's no characters involved, but it was the same food. Um, Auntie's character breakfast was a ton of fun, I thought. A great character interaction. Um, we have a couple of videos for that. The first one is something that we did put up on the site um, and on Facebook when we uh, were there and took the video. One of the reasons why I want to show it again is, first of all, I think it kind of brings us back to Alani. But also, um, we just happen to have a great table. Uh, Auntie is your host for the character breakfast and she comes around and interacts with the kids and does parades and all sorts of fun stuff. And she happened to land at our table. Just perfect. Right across from me did this whole song. So I wanted to share that with everybody. She was fantastic. We had such a great time. Uh, in that video and other videos we're going to show you, we did travel with our friends Jeff and Val and Kathy, who is Webmaster Kathy on the boards, and we just had a great time. Everybody had so much fun. I thought this was a great breakfast, a great character interaction. I thought Auntie was great. I agree. You also, there's a, range, there's a time range. So we were there. We're not jump out of bed and go to breakfast, people. Uh, we're just not. So we were there about 9.15, and the buffet was still going strong, and the characters were out and about the whole time we were there. It wasn't, you know, right. they didn't disappear. So I thought it was really well and done. And Auntie did this interaction throughout, you know, the, our seating as well as other seatings. We've got an overview video, uh, a little bit of the character interaction, and then some of the food shots. And then from there, we'll go into some pictures of the food we took. Um, again, great character stuff. You start out with a little Mickey meet and greet. Um, you know, you take your picture, typical stuff with Mickey. Goofy is there. There was a photo pass photographer there as well. Taking the opportunity to sell you things. When they when you were done, typical came to your table, tried to sell you the picture of your family. However, I have to say, the photo pass photographers were there taking pictures that they were selling, but the very first question they asked us was, Would you like us to use your cameras? So they took pictures for all of us. Now this the Minnie. video that we're seeing here isn't that meet and greet, but Minnie came to our table and there was a great deal. We were also right in the crossroads. We had a great where spot. Everybody was going. Yeah, so. we really had a great spot. And again, there's the there's the kids stuff. They had a little parade, and of course there was food as well. Even though we had a great time with the characters, um, well prepared, well displayed, typical breakfast fare: a waffles, sausage, 
bacon, scrambled eggs. What was nice, though, was they had some Hawaiian specialties. As you all know, Spam is a thing in Hawaii. Every, Hawaiian people love Spam. It's a delicacy there. So there was Spam available <laughs> on it. There was also a Japanese section where uh, certain foods appeal to the Japanese tourists. So it was a nice variety. Um, he's putting out right now. The gentleman's putting out malasadas. Woo! Yay for malasadas! Mm, moment of silence for mama, malas, <laughs> malasadas. I was going to say malasadas. Yeah. Um, again, what I what I really enjoyed about this was, um, again, care and presentation, care and preparation of the food. The food was good. Um, some of the places we're seeing now are a little bit, you know, uh, less food depleted. In them, depleted because we were. Pigs, but now the same hash, corned beef hash that they served in Ama Ama was on the breakfast buffet. So if you wanted to make your own plate, fresh fish, um, lox, bagels, white fish, then I had an omelet station, a gentleman making omelets uh, for you to order while you wait. Again, and this is one of those things where I thought this was worth the money, right? Between the character interaction, between uh, the food you got between Auntie being a great character and interacting with the kids and parades and let's make music and let's bang things together. Really, really liked um, Auntie this experience. was charming. I thought Auntie was charming. Right. She walked around from table to table. Mm -hmm. And you can tell when someone's enjoying what right. they're doing yeah. and that this isn't a Is business she, smile. I, she been at the resort for a while. Like it seems like I've seen her. It seems that every visit now. I don't, I don't want to ruin the magic for anybody, but Auntie is actually a local performer. Right. And she's been with Alani since the beginning, is what I've been told. Um, and she's, But it's almost like they don't even rotate aunties. Right. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, it seems like it's always her. She's Auntie, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. Um, let's go through some of the pictures of the food. Uh, you know, again, this is typical breakfast fair, Mickey Head Waffles. If your kids have to have that Mickey Head Waffle, we can, you know, they can certainly have that there. Um, tater tots and scrambled eggs and just, you know, you don't have now, to worry they about... they had regular tater tots and I think tater tots are in the perfect food group. I mean, they are one of the perfect foods in life. A tater tot is great. <laughs> At night, they had tater tots on the kids' section of the buffet and they were made out of sweet potatoes. Oh. <laughs> That's just wrong. <laughs> A sweet potato oh. tater tot. A little less perfect. I was angry. <laughs> you know, like, great selection of uh, rolls. Again, this is some of the stuff we saw at Ama Ama. Some of the same rolls we saw at Ama Ama. Um, just really good stuff. French toasts. I don't know. What else everything was fresh. Everything was pancakes, hot. malasadas. Everything was, um, well presented. Uh, again, John said there was an omelet station. It was. If you've been to Disney, this was a Disney breakfast buffet kicked up a notch. Apparently the fish was popular. The fish and the there. meats were popular. Everybody went and grabbed those. Um, again, this was something that I felt was worth the money. Mm -hmm. I felt we got our money's worth out of it. Uh, kids were having a great time. Parents were having a great time with the kids. The characters not only had um, enough time to visit with all the kids, they really went out of their way to be in character and really interact with everybody. Now, I don't want anybody to think that we're just being Pollyanna-ish Pollyanna -ish, Pollyanna -ish about this. We didn't think dinner was as right. successful. So that's going to be our next thing we're going to talk about, the next video. Do you know, up. just before you move on to dinner, um, what did breakfast cost you? i got to tell you off the top of my head, I can't remember. I was, I was just looking on the site, and I didn't see it listed. I want to say it was like 39 or $42 a person. I, yeah. it was, I think it was it, under 40 bucks a person I for adults. I know they used to have where the characters were only like three mornings a week, and that one was over 40 and then there was another one. Uh, breakfast was $32 if there were no characters. I have a feeling now they do characters every morning. I was just trying to see that online. And uh, it looks like characters are it looks like characters are every morning now, and I would think that thirty nine to forty three forty four dollars should be about the range for adults. And again, we thought it was worth it. Yeah, we thought it was whatever price we paid. We were glad. I don't to know do if it. you guys do this, but when we decide on days that we're going to go out for breakfast or we're going to do a breakfast like this, it's kind of two meals. This is a kind of our breakfast and our lunch. So you know, we may have. Is breakfast. she speaking English? <laughs> Well, she's saying the same thing you did. We went a little bit later. Right. Uh, yeah. So like if we went like 9, 30, 10 o'clock, you know, this would kind of be two meals for us, which makes it even better value yeah. for us. Well, especially for some of the, the more exotic food. So I 
don't remember a lot about the meals and the actual things I ate whenever I was at Alani, but I remember this one because we did go early for breakfast, but then I got there and saw some of the more uh, the exotic things, like the fact that they had fried rice mm-hmm. sitting there in the right. morning. and uh, It like, felt more brunchish, right? Exactly. Like more like a brunch. So I turned it into that, especially once I uh, tried Loco Moco, the uh, oh, hamburger yeah. patty. We didn't get to that, the, the Loco Moco. Like, oh, God, so good. It's I, I love this place. That. I can still taste the gravy and everything with it. Look at this dish. This dish has a loco moco on it. has a malasada. has fried rice. I mean, this was a great yeah. breakfast. Also called Hawaiian perfection yeah. on really? a plate. There's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> loco moco is rice, a hamburger patty. Uh, fried egg. A, a fried egg, Fried usually. or a poached egg, and then gravy. Uh, yeah. Beef or veal gravy. And it's everywhere. It's a Hawaiian. Yeah. I Don't found like the pricing. Same. Adults are $35 per person. Kids ages 9 and under are $18 a person. It does not list separate pricing for different times or different days, yeah. so I assume now we're I, all yeah, character Yeah, I breakfast. think they've changed it now, so it's all character. Now, we've told people, we've always said this as for as far as Disney World, too. If you're thinking about um, having a buffet and you can get the last seating for breakfast, many times they'll change over into lunch. <laughs> Yeah, we can. You can eat right through to lunch. We may, may or may not have done that on a cruise ship once exactly. or twice. <laughs> <laughs> but we were. I was going back to the. This could count yes, as two exactly. meals. Yep. Certainly a lot of stuff. And there's, if you do a search online, you can actually find the full menu. And it talks about there's a Japanese section with, you know, fried fish and soba noodle soup and things like that. If that's what you were into. All right. So Kevin alluded to the fact that while we really enjoyed Auntie's character breakfast. The Many Hoonie Mischief character dinner was not quite as successful. Olani makes a big deal out of the Manahoonies. And the Manahoonies, they have a Manahuni um, trail. And the Manahoonies can either give you a small treat or wish you luck, or they can be mischievous. Uh, if you look around, you'll see them in some unusual places. One of the elevators in Olani has a Manahuni up in the corner of the elevator. Uh, so they're all over the resort. So I assumed that's what the Menahuni Mischief Dinner was. It was going to be regarding that. The Menahuni Mischief Dinner had Auntie's um, better half, uncle. And, Not really better. Uh, <laughs> where I thought she was um, charming and sweet and involved. I didn't find that with him. I th- I kind of found him off-putting. He was also was very disjointed. He was trying to do this thing where he's reading from a book and telling you the story of the Menahuni and the and the myth of it all, and it was just kind of a mess. Now, you have to understand that he's standing in one section of this buffet restaurant, and again, surprisingly, we ended up with the same exact table we had for breakfast. I think that went to the fact that it was the large table and we were a large party. Right. So... He stood in a part of the restaurant where I couldn't really see him dead on. And there was music and there was characters and there was people getting food and there were families talking. I had no clue what he was talking about. He was reading something from a storybook and Chip and Dale were bouncing off the walls. And where the morning was charming and sweet and organized, this was... Chaos. Buffet dinner chaos. Let's do a little bit. Let's watch the video and we can uh, show what's going on. Again, you start your experience there with a meet and greet with Donald, and Donald was great. He was very animated. He was having fun with everybody. I really thought it was great of them to allow me to sort of say, stop, and let me just take some video of Donald. They were very good about that. They would take, again, there was a, a photographer there. They were happy to take our pictures with our cameras. Chip and Dale were there, of course. Chip and Dale have to show up everywhere. The filler characters are everywhere. They are even in Hawaii. And then there's Stitch. And oh, Stitch is Stitch. He's great. Stitch was really cool. He was doing a lot of fun stuff. He was very animated. <laughs> Hammed it up for the cameras. Stitch would steal kids' hats or take mm-hmm. hats and change. He went over and sat on one little girl's lap. And she just, it was her birthday, so he sat on her lap and pretended he was going to eat all of her birthday cake. Hugging everybody, everybody having a good time. Little did we know what was to come. The food. (laughs) (laughs) Kathy's face. (laughs) She's priceless, isn't she? Here's a little bit of Uncle doing his thing, leading a parade. 
you know, and of course there's, you know. See, so now where Auntie's always been the same, this is a different uncle. There's a different uncle for sure. So Auntie's got some stories to tell. <laughs> <laughs> really? And that's where the fun ends because then we had wow. to eat. And oh. the, here's a video. The food itself was, it, it was this mess. Mm-hmm. Everything was sort of this brown, gloppy mess, and the it was a. Where I would tell you that the breakfast buffet was the best of Disney buffets. This is typical the Disney Hollywood buffet. Line of yeah, buffets. I, 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 we were far less enthralled with this. And again, the characters and the noise and Uncle reading from this storybook. It was just, it they was do, loud and disjointed. And what I love is they have, we just saw the crab legs. They do those king crab legs and everybody freaks out. King crab legs, yay, I'm going to eat them. There's such a pain in the butt to open. There's little meat in there. And it's, it's like, a lot of work it? for a little reward. Exactly. Now, there was a very small section of the dinner buffet that had sushi. Yep. Mm-hmm. However, it was, I'm going to guess, n- total length, it's four feet. See, but it it's sort of tucked in a corner and... They would put these platters out, and it was like those beetles that just <laughs> descended on something, and then it was gone. So it was it was hard to get to. It was tucked out of the way, and it was always really crowded. Well, they had a carving station. Uh, I believe that day they were uh, carving. Um, and some well, of the carvings were very good. They However, Stitch yell, I, laughing at us or attending this. <laughs> <laughs> to end with they stitch. had cookies that removed oh, all mama, moisture you from your food. body. <laughs> yeah, could have thrown them in the dryer with a wet bathing suit. They had this weird mousse dessert that was just bitter and awful. I mean, everything was. They had oysters that people took. First of all, I said, I can't believe you're eating oysters at this buffet. Yeah, people put it up to their mouths and it wouldn't eat them because they smelled so bad, like they had gone bad. It was just horrible, 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 horrible. The cost for this was forty seven dollars per adult. Twenty-one dollars for kids nine and under. I wouldn't use the word horrible because we all ate. We all found something to eat. We all sort of made what we could out of it. Right. We all ate. It's not like I, I, when I say horrible, I mean we get up and leave. That's horrible. This just yeah. wasn't very good. And it was again the chaos and the noise. And he. It, it seemed like every time I turned around. The other thing is they would stop in the intersection that everybody had to walk to to get the food. So while they were reading from this storybook and dancing and running around, to get to the food, you had to go to either end of the restaurant. So it was, it, the, the traffic was the traffic pattern was all off. It just, it was not nearly as successful as breakfast. I agree. I agree. And a lot more expensive and just wasn't as good. All right, so let's move on. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, poolside dining. We did this quite a bit. So did not, we. Not ashamed to mention it. Not nope, ashamed not to say it. And that's why we had wanted Alma Alma one day. We wanted something different because we had done this a few times and enjoyed yeah. it. And the menu's varied enough that I think you can get something every day for like five days mm-hmm. and enjoy it. There were chicken tenders. There was pizza. There was a hot dog. Um, everybody talks about a $7 hot dog. Uh, actually, I think the hot dog is now $10. However, it comes with French fries. And this yeah. is. The $10 hot dog comes with French fries. The $7 hot dog is just the hot dog. Oh, uh, maybe I didn't have the $7 yeah, hot dog. Yeah, you, you actually $10. have to go to the hot dog hot oh. to now, get the I would <laughs> also tell you this is not a typical hot no, dog. No, it's a good hot this dog. This is what I would call yeah. a dinner hot dog. Yeah. I don't know if that makes a difference to other people, but in our, you know, you can buy regular hot dogs or you can buy dinner hot dogs. Yeah, I like, I really like these hot dogs. This is probably six or seven inches long. It was good. It was delicious. Um, let's go through them. This is a hamburger, well prepared, nice hamburger. Um, you can have the French fries on the side of everything, or they offer a Caesar salad or fresh fruit. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if you're trying to be a little bit better at things. The chicken tenders. This, mm-hmm. I believe, is the chicken sandwich. I think this is the cheeseburger. That's the cheeseburger. Yep. yep. You're right. Um, get avocado on it or on the side. Lettuce, tomato. Um, all very good. Good food. It, you, what I was happy about was it always arrived hot. Mm-hmm. It showed up, you know, wherever you were hot. You know, it was the type of thing where you thought, oh, this is I think that's gross. the tuna sandwich. I liked that you could also get yep. to, uh, the, the potato chips. chips as a side. Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't want French fries. What's um, this thing? Here, this dip. Those are um, that's hummus and pita. This was not worth it. <laughs> yeah, this was sort of the least successful thing we did. Uh, we wanted to try it because it's on the menu, but you know, it was just not fantastic. When everything else, we thought everything else was hot and good and 
really, really flavorful. It just wasn't. Um, and they come around a home run. with menus. Like mm-hmm. so, we, this isn't just Cabana. Um, in the in the Cabana, you get the same menus as Kevin mentioned on another show. Um, but they come around with menus, and then they'll deliver the food right at your poolside chair if yep. you like. So you don't necessarily have to go somewhere to pick that up. Uh, same thing with drinks. They all come to the table as well. There's cool. actually seating areas for food. So if mm-hmm. you didn't want to sit in a lounge chair and eat, yep. you can go and sit at a table. Or you can pull up chairs and sit and eat, or you can eat. And near the bars and where the food is served, there are tables that actually have little uh, tent signs on them that say for dining only. Right. That's not where you can set up shop for the day. All right. So again, poolside dining was is great at Alani. We think it's worth it. We think it's, you know, you have somebody delivering food to you while you're sitting yeah. by a pool. I yeah. mean, how can you go wrong? In addition to the poolside dining where they bring you the food, there's also the Ulu Cafe. And this is kind of their grab-and-go location. But it's more than that because they do have hot food. They do serve a breakfast and a lunch. There's an all-day menu where you can go and get something hot. Or you can grab a sandwich or a salad if that's what you're in the mood for. It's also ice cream there, um, sweets, sweets, chips. There's a little uh, wine area. There's a story about the malasadas. They sell malasadas, and malasadas are donuts. Yes. And you can get them with just cinnamon sugar. You can get them filled. Well, one of our friends found them, and next to them were little cups, <laughs> and they thought they were I've things. recently heard of somebody else doing this, too. I think this is the same story. Oh, okay. Next to the malasadas were little cups, so they decided this was dipping sauce. Yeah, so maybe took, strawberries or something. Maybe strawberries to dip our donuts <laughs> in. Well, they took the dipping sauce with them and got that to the table, and they realized that what they had taken was salsa. <laughs> mm. <laughs> to dip your donut in. It was mala mm-hmm. salsa. Yeah. They also, uh, they have uh, specials each day in the Ulu Cafe. So a special flatbread or uh, like a meal of the day or, so there was a lot of choices. good options, a lot of choices. This happens to be, I took some video during breakfast, so mm-hmm. you can see the breakfast they have, but you're right. I mean, what they have during the day is great. And what what is really good is you can go and you can get it and then bring it to where you are and sit and eat. Right. You know, so this you, is the outside of the Ulu Cafe is one of the drink stations. A refillable, mm-hmm. if you have a refillable cup. All right. We give all of our clients a refillable mug when you book a Disney resort. This is very near the adult pool. This is closest to the adult pool. Right. right. Pastry is very nice. Pastry is available. Um, you know, Disney theming there as well. You might see a Mickey or a Minnie shaped pastry or um, cookie. And these are Disney prices. Yes. You know, there's no bargains to be had in the Ulu Cafe, really. Um, but it's all relative to where you are, and yeah. and but um, good. and it's convenience. You're yeah. paying for convenience, that's for sure. Yep. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's a great additional offering for folks who are out there who are looking for something to eat. Um, you could also get family sized pizzas from here. Yes. So there is, um, and we'll talk about that on another show. I think about yep. other offsite places to go. Um, but if you wanted to, you could get a family sized pizza right here. Um, from we saw people do Ulu. that and eat them poolside. Yep, you get it from Ulu, you take it back. And now to that pizza is going to be more than what you're going to order at home from your local guy, but it's all relative. And if your family of four can eat off eat off a family pizza, it's going to be good value. Agreed. I think it's a great. There's some alternatives there. Like I said, we saw the video. There are salads yep. for if you don't want to do burgers and hot dogs and fries all the time. You know things like that. Fresh fruit is available. A lot of fresh. Yeah. So all things like that. Um, the last thing I want to talk about as far as dining at Alani is um, they're now offering in-room private dining. The last time we went there, this wasn't an option. They had something called a family dinner mm-hmm. you could order, and that was sort of a set menu where you can order. It would be like a chicken and mashed potatoes and things like that. This is now actually a menu you can order off of and get delivered to your room. That menu that you were talking about, the family menu, we had decided we were going to do that for our first night. Because when you get there, you've been traveling all day, and we thought this was really great. That's been discontinued. Right. The only in-room dining now is this off this um, room service menu. You can do breakfast, lunch, dinner, all-day dining. There's drinks. There's a full whole bunch of things you can have delivered, uh, bottles of wine and such. We actually did not do this. Um, that's unusual this is normally yeah something we, that you guys enjoy doing but i guess with the kitchen and stuff you do make a lot of your own meals we also found that this was we were hoping for something where all of the restaurants offer some um 
Hawaiian specialties mm-hmm. or some Asian specialties. Right. This one seemed a little generic. Yeah. Salads, Cobb salad, Caprese salad, uh, Chuck burger, turkey club. You know, just sort of things that didn't seem worth it to have this brought your... This would have your... to come from the Ama Ama kitchen, wouldn't it? I would assume so, but there might actually be a convention like a... kitchen it comes uh, from. Yes, that happens be. in convention. I'm going to be honest with you. It seemed space. generic enough that we all said no. Right. N- nothing piqued anybody's interest. This is the kind of stuff I would order in an airport hotel. And I don't mean to make, I'm not yeah. making a slur against it. Or if I was so exhausted that I couldn't go get anything else. But I thought the Ulu Cafe had more more choices and more uh, different choices, I guess is the word. This was a, a basic room service menu. And I was surprised that this wasn't the menu at the cabana. Last episode, we talked about renting a cabana and having food delivered there. It was off of the regular poolside dining menu. This is what I expected to have the choice of ordering. And I probably would have paid for it there. I probably said, well, let's try it. Let's have something different. Prices were kind of high for the room service or private dining. It just didn't seem like something that would fit our style. However, I will say this. You would walk down the hall and you would see the room service trays mm-hmm. outside people's rooms. So people were doing it. Yeah. So it, we, just, I think the night we decided we might give that a try, we ended up going someplace else. I think that night we went to Monkey Pod for dinner, but Probably. that's another show. That's another show and another story for another show. So that'll do it for our dining at Alani, everything we had a chance to do and eat. Um, next episode, what we'll do is we're going to talk about off-site dining and some of the things we did off-site, um, off-site of the Disney property, Disney's Alani Resort and Spa property. But up next, I want to talk about our contest. Um, We usually end our shows with our agent spotlight, where we highlight one of our Dreams Unlimited travel agents. For this month, we're going to be doing a contest in honor of our stay at Alani. You can win a five-day, four-night stay at Disney's Alani Resort and Spa for up to four adults in an ocean view room. Uh, this does not include air transfers, food, souvenirs, and or miscellaneous expenses, just your room stay and taxes. Uh, date restrictions apply and travel cannot be over a major U.S. holiday, but we will do our best to work with you and try to get you what you're looking for as long as it's not too crazy. Some rules about this contest. Uh, you must be 21 years of age or older to enter. All entries, all, I <laughs> keep doing it. It's not entrees. <laughs> all entries must be received by August 15th, 2016. We'll cut off um, submissions at that point. Uh, they'll be accepted via email only to a special email address that will go live um, at the end of the month. And that's Alani underscore contest at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. And it must include your full legal name, email address, home address, and correct answers to all 10 questions. One entry per email address. All 10 questions will be posted during the Dreams Unlimited Travel podcasts about Alani during the month of July. There'll be some questions in each podcast. You must wait until all questions have been posted before sending in your answers. One winner will be drawn from all uh, entries received with correct answers. By submitting your entry, you agree to allow Dreams Unlimited Travel to announce and post your name on multiple websites and social media networks in conjunction with winning the contest. Last week, last show, we did questions one through three, uh, and I'm going to let Tracy read the next set of questions um, as she is the... nicer this time? No, she's not. not. They get harder as we go along. So be prepared, folks. And I will say I had some help with the questions. Chris helped me, too. So Why don't we I have Chris on the show? We should have Chris on the show. We should, especially when we're talking about Alani. Really? Next time. Yeah, because he pronounces way better than we do. <laughs> uh, so question number four. Olelo room is one of the lounges at Alani. What is the meaning of the word Olelo? And I'm, please, I'm sure I'm pronouncing it wrong, but there it is. We did not get a chance to eat there this trip. We just didn't fit We did our... one evening. We went for drinks and just had, it's more like... Finger food, finger and food, bar and food. It's stuff. a nice place to spend, even, especially when the, there's that's where there's often live entertainment. So it can be a really nice way to spend a couple hours in the evening. Question number five: What year did Aulani, a Disney resort and spa, open? <laughs> <laughs> we are easily to start, aren't we? We are. 
Question number six. How many acres does Aulani, a Disney resort and spa, occupy? <laughs> and again, we may talk about some of this stuff on our shows. We may not. If not, you're going to have to go and look up the answers and find them for yourself. So we wanted to make it a little bit of a challenge because it is, we consider this a really good prize. We think this we is a do. cool prize, so we wanted to make it a little more challenging for folks. So again, wait until the end of the month, and then you'll be able to submit your answers to all 10 questions and get those into our contest. So that'll do it for part two of our four-part series on Alani. Uh, this was a Disney Resort and Spa. A Disney Resort and Spa, all about <laughs> dining. We hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, we hope you join us next week where we talk about other things we did on Oahu and other places we ate. Uh, but until then, we hope you have a great week and a great vacation.